<laughs> SexyHackers.com Once upon a time, there were a few young girls with a passion for literature, a love of the written word, an inspired infatuation of... Okay, fine. We were a bunch of super dorks with no friends. We spent all day hiding out in our rooms, reading books that were maybe a little inappropriate. Hello and welcome everyone to Who Let Me Read This, the podcast where a group of Milwaukee artists gather to discuss the books of, well, super inappropriate books of our childhood specifically, and how it's affected our lives and our ongoing therapy bills over the years from absorbing this. Uh, and I fear I've contributed greatly to everyone's therapy bill by making them read Judy Bloom's <laughs> Lover. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I would have needed, I think I would have needed more therapy if I had read it as a child. Oh, yeah. So. Well, I'm glad I waited then. Yeah. That we just yeah. met. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this week, continuing our discussion of this delightful book, uh, we have Miss Andrea Radel Schrader, Miss Bianca Brandolino, Hello. and Miss Sarah Wallish. Guys, there is so much to talk about in this delightful book, but um, I think, Sarah, do you want to kick us off with um, a little heads up for everybody, and then I'll go over a recap. Yes, um, so we are going to have just a little heads up, a little content warning heads up. Um, This book uh, deals very heavily with bullying themes, um, and the bullying described in the book is intense. there is definitely a focus on body shaming. Um, there is, like, physical bullying. Um, so we are going to be, throughout the throughout the episodes for this book, we are going to be addressing very heavy bullying themes. So just make sure you're in the headspace <laughs> to listen to that um, when you're when you're coming at these at these books because the situations that are presented in the book, some of them are pretty intense and terrible. And if you're not in the right space for us, we're always here for you. And also, I think the, the not warning, but the suggestion we give on every episode, don't ever think that therapy is, you know, is a bad thing. Therapy is yes. good for everyone. Everyone yes. on this book could have benefited from therapy. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. So good. We um, recommend therapy to almost every character. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, so a little recap in case you didn't listen to last week's episode. Shame. Um, so as you could our go back and do it right now. Oh yeah, that's right. There's we'll time. Just wait. Hit pause. Totally fine. Go back. We'll be here. Be here. We're back. All right. <laughs> okay. So as our story began last week, uh, we met fifth grader Jill, who's our protagonist. Well, she's at least our narrator. Um, yes. And her classmates Wendy and Caroline, who are the bullies. Uh, we met her best friend Tracy, and the target of the bullying, Linda. Um, other class so linda while giving a report on whales is teased mercilessly and called blubber by her classmates um jill even decides to dress up as a flenser which is like a whale hunter someone who strips whales for a costume contest and she lost thankfully i really cheered in that moment oh, yeah. who knows <laughs> who knows what a flenser is what grade schooler is like I'm going to vote for that. That It's just not going to happen. Yeah, I feel like everybody in that room was just like, well, our boots are cool, but that guy's a fried egg, so... (laughs) Fried egg's pretty cool. Yeah. 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 Uh, And then the girls decide to escalate their bullying by trapping Wendy in the bathroom and humiliating her and assaulting her, ripping her clothes, showing her underpants to everyone, Mm -hmm. making her call them Queen Wendy and curtsy to them and insulting herself. It's it's pretty graphic and terrible. And that's where we left last week on a super depressing note. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Lovely. Uh, So as we get into this week, we get to learn other ways that Jill is a really big jerk. Yeah. 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 Jill's Uh, the worst. She is. Jill's a nightmare. Um, (laughs) Jill and her best friend go off trick or treating um, for Halloween because this all takes place around Halloween. And the her best friend Tracy Wu, who is dressed as Big Bird, yeah, and it sounds like the coolest costume. Pretty pretty beautiful. (laughs) Uh, They decide to egg Mister Machinist mailbox. And the the reason that they give that they're going to, you know, egg his mailbox is that in previous years when kids have tried to do this, he gets mad. Yeah. How dare he be I upset mean, about he it? He won't donate to UNICEF. U- yeah. Yep. UNICEF. Yeah. Yep. That's it. That's um, their excuse. Yeah. Which if we can just drill down for just a second. 
their definition of egging, they saved eggs oh for a month, mm -hmm. and then they're cracking them into his mailbox Federal and leaving offense. them. Federal offense. Mm -hmm. Just Some think about that for a minute. Eggs. Ugh. Yes, they talk about how funny it's going to be when he puts his hand into his mailbox to get his mail. Psychopaths. And comes out with a Psychopaths. handful Horrifying. of rotten eggs. Tracy, you are better than this. <laughs> she is. <laughs> right? Also, you poor postal worker. Totally yeah. unrelated. Yeah, right? They're going to yes, stick their right. hand postal into that The postal worker has nothing bomb. to do with this. Yeah. And they are going to be the first one that has to, like, deal with it. Right. So they decide that they're going to do that and soap his car. Um, and they get... Um, they really they're like oh we can't get caught because mr machinist takes pictures of the kids who does this um because he holds them accountable well how oh, dare how he? dare he <laughs> come yeah. on yeah he's like presented as a creep which like no he just doesn't want you fucking up his shit like right. yeah. <laughs> yep um yeah. and then they also decide to tp linda's house and write Blib blubber lives here on her sidewalk in, yep. in chalk mm -hmm. which that's a, I was like, hold on, at, at what point do Linda's parents not step in and say, honey, right. what's this? What's going on at school? Yeah, you there's know? a lot of like, I really hope Linda's parents were just like super supportive, but we just never see any of it. Because she also yeah. like, there are so many things about Linda and like the things that Linda does in reaction to these bullying situations where I'm just like, where are your parents? Somebody yeah. needs to give you a hug. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Like, were you talking to them about it and they didn't do anything? Or were you not talking to them about it? And I don't know which is worse. Yeah. Like, right. It's all awful. Maybe she read Blubber and so she just didn't <laughs> think anybody was going to do anything <laughs> about like, it. Don't talk like, to this my This is parents. normal. Right? This is what happens. Um, yeah. So they, they have their Halloween adventure. And mm -hmm. um, Jill comes home with her hair soaking wet. Yeah, and her mom's like, yes, because Mister, they run into, um, they oh, run yeah, into yeah. the bullies. They run into Wendy and what's her name, Caroline. Caroline. Yep, Caroline. Does I don't nothing, remember. By the way, way. Caroline's yeah. just there. She's just there. She's a filler. Um, they run into uh, the bullies and are like bragging about how they put rotten eggs in Mister Machina's mailbox, and the bullies are like, "You did not," and they're like, "We'll prove it. We'll so go back to the scene of the crime." Back. Idiots. And show you. And so they go back and Mr. Machinist like turns the hose on them. <laughs> Team Mr. Machinist. Yeah. Right. For sure. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so we she's soaking wet when she gets home. Yeah. yeah. We also get the weird insight that like as far as she's concerned, um, smashing pumpkins goes too far. Yeah. Right? <laughs> she <laughs> says like three times. Yeah. Gail. I have like, that moment. And she's like, <laughs> yeah, we don't smash pumpkins. That makes you feel bad. And, and then she puts like eggs in this mailbox and writes blubber lives here. I'm just like, Wait, what? what? Yeah. yeah. The she has more empathy for pumpkins than she, she has, has empathy for herself. Yeah. Yes. If yes. her pumpkin is smashed, yes. it's an issue. Oh, yeah, because her pumpkin did get smashed yep. and that's, that's why, why she, she cares. cares. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. Now she puts them inside. Which, yes. again, she was so smart for doing, that. and she makes a point to say that. Yes, because she is smarter and better than everyone. Right? Yeah. And, you know, she starts picking on Kenny for not going trick-or-treating with her, her little brother, um, even though he's he stays home to give out candy, because that's yeah. what he wants to do. Because he's, he's a genuine, pure human best. being. Sweet baby angel Kenny. <laughs> he's, do you think that he gives out candy and also fun facts? I, I hope so. Every time totally someone does. comes to the door, they're like, trick-or-treat, and he's like, here's you candy, and did you know? <laughs> <laughs> that whales have hair teeth. Yes. yes. That's called Baleen. Baleen. <laughs> Lean. Oh, so after the delights of trick or treating are over, the next day they're at lunch, um, and the class is sitting and eating unsupervised. I don't know any yeah. school that allows that. They don't have a lunchroom, yeah. so they just sit in their classrooms, and like one teacher goes door to door, just be like, "You good?" and then continues. Right? Because sure. Uh, and the the class suddenly starts mocking Linda for her very normal kid lunch. She, mm -hmm. they describe she's got a sandwich, an apple, and some Hostess cupcakes. Yep. Yeah. They like throw standard. everything around. They smash her cupcakes. Rude. Everybody yeah. knows that those Hostess cupcakes were special, right? Like Every that's time. a special yeah. treat. Every like, time. Those are the kids that you want to be friends with. Are the kids right? who get the Hostess cupcakes in their lunch because maybe they'll share with you. Yeah. Right. Instead, they smash it's them. Like, and, like toss the apple around. It's rough. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
continue to call her blubber. And so the next day she arrives with like a very clearly a diet lunch. She's got Ugh. celery and saltine and cheese. That's it. That's oh, her lunch. Worst. And declares that she's going to lose 10 pounds so they can't call her blubber anymore. That broke my heart. Yeah. yeah. Like that little girl mm-hmm. either asking her mom to make her that kind of lunch or like having that conversation and her mom made her that lunch like maybe she was like oh yeah honey you do need to lose some weight so here's your diet yeah. lunch linda's mom we're gonna have words yeah. I, like linda's this is another another example in this book of adults having an opportunity to have like a productive conversation or a teachable moment with uh, their child about how like yeah. diet culture is not okay and it just not happening. Right? Yeah. Here, have some celery. Right? Any of those. Uh, also, celery is terrible and no awful, one should eat it. Worst. It's the worst vegetable. Yep. Yeah. It is the Other worst. things, <laughs> like, there's no nutritional value. Like, it's just water. It Crisp- tastes it's bad. It has water. a bad texture. It's yeah. crispy, and that's the only thing that has going for it. Yep. yep. That's it. And it doesn't matter because kids don't actually care about effort. You know, no one's like, oh, well, we support you on that or anything. They're like, well, you're going to stand up in front of the class and say, my name will always be Blubber. And they make her, like, declare that constantly. Super hating. There's a lot of that, like, making her, making someone get up in front of everyone and say something. Mm -hmm. Which... Yuck. Yuck. Mm-hmm. Yep. So much yuck. So much yuck. Hate it. Um, and then we get into the next piece of yuck. Uh, wow. When Jill gets home today, gets home that day, we just start dropping a little bit of casual racism into oh, yeah. this. Um, and it's her parents don't really address it. Nope. No one does anything. Nope. Again. No. I was already like, I had been pretty shocked earlier in the book where um, Jill just straight up calls the teacher a bitch. I was yep. like, Judith. <laughs> and then we got, yeah, we got like 20 pages further and they just dropped the C slur in relation to yep. Tracy. Yep. We're like, wow. Yeah. Just like mid convo too. Mm-hmm. She's just like, hey mom, you remember that one time when blah, blah, blah called Tracy a, a insert slur. Chinese racial slur here. Yep. And then mom doesn't say like, oh, hey, maybe you shouldn't say that either. And then they just talk about that for a second. And then mom's like, it's okay. Laugh it off. Yeah, yeah. The focus is on how Tracy was called the Seasler um, and decked the kid who called her it. Which is valid. Which, yeah. Which, like, it's yes. Valid. But also, you shouldn't have to. <laughs> I right? know. Because yeah, someone should. <laughs> should do something. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and like, Jill's mom is just like, yeah, that's the right course of action. Right. And then it never happened again, right? Like, well, who? and Jill's mom, too, is like, well, if someone is bullying you, you should just laugh it off. Mm-hmm. If you don't, if you don't like make a big deal out of it, they'll stop. Which we've seen isn't a thing so far in this book is not the case. No, if anything, they double down. Like, <laughs> so her mom has just told her, "I don't understand what's happening." Mm-hmm. Like. Essentially, her mom has just told her, I don't understand what's happening and I'm not going to be any help to you. Yep. Yeah. None. Yep. Whatsoever. Um, And even in this, gosh, even in 1974, sorry, we we know that was inappropriate to put in this book. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You don't have to say the thing. Like, you can, you could have handled that better to just say, do you remember that time Tracy got called a really mean name? Yeah. That's it. We could have left it at that. That's all you need. Yeah, and And if you want to infer that it's racial, then you say because she's Chinese. Yep, you did not. And it's like it's like you're reading, you're reading, reading. You turn the page, there it is. Like Like, it's like immediate. And I was like, oh, this is one of those books. I guess (laughs) we're just not gonna get a break. Yeah, no, (laughs) we're just gonna keep hitting at it. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Every, every moment from every direction and and again it's an opportunity for jill's mom to parent and she doesn't no, take just it. does not yeah. like <gasps> doesn't uh, bite no she's but gonna, oh no she's not yep and then yeah. it gives jill the chance to rip on her mom for not quitting smoking yeah mm-hmm. again do, do you know how hard it is to quit smoking jill there's the little turkey she doesn't commercial obviously the commercial yeah. right well, but, and i feel like especially like back in this time there was a lot less resources available 
mm-hmm. in order to help you do yeah. that. And there's yeah. a lot less like information out there to help that versus mm-hmm. just Jill going like, you know, you're going to get lung cancer, right? Like, Fuck off, Jill. <laughs> God, <laughs> she's the worst. I don't want to say that it's my favorite part of this podcast is making Andrew <laughs> upset, but it's one of my favorite parts. <laughs> Is you're, you're you know you're such a quiet, calm human in real life that to see you rage out on books, um, yeah, is what I get most ragey about. Yep, <laughs> like if if this was a Marvel movie, this is where you go Hulk, and you're like, it's my secret. I'm always angry. Yeah, <laughs> at Judith Bloom. <laughs> okay, well you know. Sun's going down, big guy. <laughs> it's getting oh. real dark. Here we go. Speaking of getting real dark, we'll be back in just a second for our <laughs> WTF moments after a word from our sponsors, uh, Sexy Hackers. You can check out Sexy Hackers TV to see all the other podcasts on this network. There's some pretty awesome ones uh, featured down on our T-shirts down there. Like Turn the Page Fun. You can Turn see the page there's fun. One. They're Turn a good to page time. fun where they read um, read and review choose your own adventure books. Yep, a idea so amazing, and this is said by their host. Uh, it was so amazing that he stole it from his partner and immediately froze her out of the production process. That's me. That's her. <laughs> that was Sarah's idea. It truly was. <laughs> we'll be back in just a sec. Sexyhackers.com. And we're back on Who Let Me Read This, reviewing Judy Bloom's Blubber. Throw this book constantly. <laughs> uh, throw it for 93 yards. Oh my, yeah, throw it for 93 yards. It is sport ball season, um, oh. as we talk about those things on Sunday. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> oh, so we, um, in this week, we had... You know what? There, I, won't, I don't want to even say there were so many WTFs this week. There are so many WTFs in this book. As yeah. a whole, yeah. Mm-hmm. It, it is, is just one big WTF. Huge, huge. Yeah. Um, so why don't we just start down at the other end of the table and work our way down, um, and then the outrage can just build as we yes. go through. we'll snowball <laughs> the outrage. Um, well, my first WTF is Jill's mom. Mm-hmm. Jill goes out, pulls some awful pranks. We have Halloween. established in previous episodes that pranks are not okay. Pranks nope. are not funny. We don't like pranks. We are taking a strong anti-prank stance don't on this podcast. Pranks. Don't do it. So not they even go once. out for Halloween. They put some eggs in Mr. Machinist's mailbox. He turns the hose on them. Um, when they had the, when they were doing all of this, they put like shh. Like pillow pillow cases? cases over yeah. their heads yeah. to like cover their costumes mm-hmm. and cover their faces, and they were like wearing animals. coats. Yeah, but like everybody knows who you are. You're dressed as Big Bird, Tracy. Tracy's dressed as Big Bird. She's got yellow feathers coming out the bottom <laughs> of her coat. Like everybody knows who you are. Mm-hmm. But anyway, Mister Machinist turns turns the hose on them. Tr- um, Jill goes home soaking wet. She comes in the house. Her mom is like. So you are soaking wet. Um, you want to tell me what that's about? And Jill just says, hang on, I think I wrote it down. I think you she did. She says, yeah. I'd rather not tell you. <laughs> and her mom's like, okay. That's it. And that's it. That's and a red her hair. flag and a half. Like, <laughs> Parenting. <laughs> no. Oh, Never, never that's, in my household. Yeah. But that's because my mom had a crystal ball, and she would have known exactly <laughs> what were you doing. I didn't get away with shit as a kid. <laughs> Same. Nothing. I came home and she's <laughs> just like raising an eyebrow. I'm like, dang, how did you know? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, oh, delightful. All right. I, we used to say in my house, if a bug farts in the basement, mom hears it. <laughs> <laughs> Like she just she knows everything. She knows. They're all seeing. My mom always said she yeah. had another eye on the back of her head. And I <laughs> believed her. Because I was gullible. Aww. Aww. But it was endearing, so it's fine. Yeah. Um my <laughs> what the fuck moment yeah. was purely the inclusion of a prime racial slur. I was yeah. like, Oh, okay. I just and like I said before, I guess we're just not getting a break. I, <laughs> yeah. man. It's there's no reprieve. Presented <laughs> like very, I don't even. Uh, it's like flippant. Yes, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Pre- mm-hmm. it's presented so like casually. Like, yeah. oh hey, remember when somebody said this? Yeah, mm-hmm. like like let oh, me say it said too. this, and it's not a big deal. It like, is a big oh. deal. Like 
if you needed to say a bad word in my house, like if you needed to repeat something, you had to ask permission. You're like, same. So it's not like she approached it and she was like, mom, do you remember the time that Tracy got called that no. thing, that word? Because you, know, you weren't allowed to say it. One. Yeah. 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 Just because someone else said it doesn't mean it's okay for you to say it. Yeah, yeah. being her best friend does not mean you can say the slur. That's not how this works. That, that almost, if anything, it makes, makes it, it feel worse. really bad. Yeah. Honestly, if I, if someone was calling me a slur behind my back and I found out that my friend was just casually saying it in conversation between people, yeah. I'd be like, hmm, maybe you aren't as much of a friend as yeah. I thought you were. Right. Mm-hmm. I think we've proven Jill's really not anyone's friend. She no, doesn't care about anyone no. but Jill. Jill's and about stamps. Jill. And Jill yeah. and stamps. Yeah, she's really into stamps. Which was also a thing. I didn't know that was such a thing until I read this book. Like, you hear about people who, like, collect stamps, but, yeah. like, whoa. But they're I've old never, people. I've you never think seen, about stamp collectors yeah. as being, like, a, an old man in his like, mansion yeah. with his, she's like, like I won't bite my fingernails so I can get 50 cents for <laughs> Yeah, stamp collecting. I'm like, okay. Which, like, I do have to appreciate. I'll give Judy Bloom this. She is the inverse of Christopher Pike. Where for Christopher <laughs> Pike, he gave us like probably 20 collective pages about the narrator's like hobby yeah. and how they do it. Mm-hmm. And like this book had me googling like, what does approval stamps mean? Right. <laughs> like, yeah. Right. Yeah. Because there's just very casual references to stamp yeah. collecting as if it's like a super common thing that everybody knows about. Was it very common in the know. 70s? Maybe like, it was. Did a lot of people collect stamps? I didn't yeah. get that deep oh, in the Google search. Our, our uh, sound engineer is saying yes, it was. It was a thing. <laughs> okay. So I did, then it's like, just us. We're just yeah. out of the loop. <laughs> it's just it's, it has fallen out of favor. Yeah. If it was like baseball cards or like yeah, new kids on the block cards, mm-hmm. like that, I'd be like, oh yeah, that my garbage yeah. pill kids cards. Pogs, 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 pogs. Yeah. Um, my mom wouldn't buy me a slammer, so I like made my yeah. own. Mm-hmm. Nice. I had all my brothers. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> my. I'm going to go to a petty place, guys. This whole book is a nightmare. I needed a reprieve. <laughs> so my thing that I hyper-focused on in this segment of the book is the disrespect these children show for our holiest of days, Halloween. Uh, how, how dare, dare they? They, <laughs> they yeah. don't care about their costumes. No. Nope. They don't care about trick-or-treating. Mm-hmm. They just want to go and destroy property. Mm-hmm. It's not okay. I never knew any kids like that growing up. No, we all you want, loved yeah. and respected candy. Halloween. Yeah, you want candy? You want to dress up? You want to go yeah. to people's houses? Be spooky? Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. It is the spookiest of days. Maximum sp- spoops. Yes. Right? Especially fifth grade. Yes. You weren't yes. thinking about like TP in someone's I was house. thinking about how I could right? rollerblade, trick-or-treating. I wasn't thinking <gasps> oh. about cracking eggs into people's mailboxes. So yes, efficient. I was thinking about like what neighborhoods am I going to go to where I'm yes. going to get the best candy. Yeah. Yes. What are the rich houses where they give you the full-size candy bar See? and not the wax lips In or, my like, town, apple. the rich houses gave out like Tootsie Rolls. It's true. Oh. You does, never went yeah, to the rich right. neighborhood because yeah. they were going to give you like those so, peanut butter kisses in the black and, uh, in the black yeah, and yeah, orange yeah. wrapper. There was yeah. a person yeah. whose house was immediately across from mine and he just gave out like cans of the like, was it like Good and Jolly? Or yeah, like the, Good yep. and Plenty. Yeah. The, the, the Jolly Good Soda. The Jolly Good <gasps> Soda. Oh, yeah, yes, yes. he just would buy, like he'd go to the Piggly Wiggly and he'd buy like cases of them mm-hmm. and just hand out a soda to each a kid. dream and it was were like, like yeah, always that's the best sure. guy to go to and yeah, he was like yes. right across the street so we hit him up early yeah but it like, makes it sense really some to wash soda. down all your candy I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so that that was my i just i cannot allow this to stand yeah. like well Agreed. and with an example like that in his house is it any wonder that kenny was like nah i don't need to do that i will stay home and hand out candy yeah yeah he just didn't want to yeah, hang actually. out with jill yeah mm-hmm. like, can yeah. you blame him like I'm just sad that the world didn't get to see his sweet, sweet witch yeah. costume. Well, and at yeah. that age, you do, like, I I feel like most kids do have to go trick-or-treating with their family. Like, mm-hmm. you know, if you have multiple kids in the same family, yeah, I think go my with cousins sibling, would come yeah. over. We would all, like, yeah, my go together. extended yeah, family yeah, would all go trick-or-treating thing, yeah. together. Right? And then you can I think I was in Katie. fifth grade before we were allowed yeah. to go trick-or-treating with our friends. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's like, all your cousins are going to come over and you're all going to go trick-or-treating together. Yeah. Fine. Or the here yet. Come on. Mm. Yeah. Yep. So that was deeply upsetting to me. How dare they? Yep. Yeah. Um, Blatant uh, disrespect. Yes. Uh, my, my WTF moment is is also related to the, the Halloween scene, um, but more in the, the rotten eggs that go into Mr. Machinist's mailbox. Yeah. So... Uh, 
Okay, we know what a rotten egg smells like. I'm from a paper mill town. That's what my town smells like. I, you know, I hate it. It smells like a giant fart. But Jill says that she got them, she got rotten eggs by putting them in her drawer for a month. Like, in her room with her clothes. That's... Which, like, how is Jill not getting made fun of for smelling like rotten eggs? Okay, but yep. the egg's not going to smell until you crack it. Oh, I suppose. So the she shell. really, like, that is a... That's a dangerous... Dangerous. That's a dangerous game of chicken she's playing there. Yeah. Pun intended. Uh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but like, yeah. if uh, one... One too hard slam of that dresser drawer, wow. and her all her clothes are going to smell like rotten eggs. Yep. Yeah. Um, and her mom never opened her drawers for a month. And I don't know. Like, my mom was why kinda, like, do you have a stuff. bunch of eggs in your drawer? Miss Sandemeyer yeah. was putting the laundry right, away. Exactly. Like, huh, <laughs> why? Why isn't that? And mom didn't notice that those eggs went missing. My mom knew the inventory of our entire refrigerator. Like, if suddenly a dozen eggs had gone missing, she'd be like, so, what's going on? Where's that dozen home, eggs? just come home, she spins around in a chair. Exactly. Like, right. That's, I mean, they TP somebody's house. Yeah. They do the eggs. They do the soap. Like, your mom opens the pantry, opens the fridge, and is like, hmm, I'm missing Eight rolls of toilet paper, a dozen eggs, and two bars of soap. Uh, so here's I my theory on all on. this. Yeah. <laughs> so we have Miss Sandemeyer in play, though. Mm-hmm. And I feel like she yep. was just, I'm getting paid. These kids suck. I don't <laughs> care oh, she totally what they was. do. <laughs> like, she noticed the eggs were missing and was like, huh. Sure, that's gonna come back at some point. That's why Not she goes my on problem. vacation later. <laughs> yeah, She's like, like yeah. I need to get away from these kids. Yeah, like I feel like Miss Sand because that's the thing is I feel like Miss Sandmeyer goes home and like she and her husband have like a pool. They, oh, they've yeah. got a pool going on like what they're using the eggs for yes <laughs> yeah, okay yeah so like she's too. clearly i feel like her her place in this is like she likes kenny because kenny doesn't suck mm-hmm. and as far as jill is concerned it's just yeah it's all just the game at this point of like what is this awful child up to now i'm not gonna stop it because i want to know how it goes <laughs> <laughs> yeah also above my pay grade yeah like, true clearly if parents aren't stepping in to say anything or do anything all I'm doing is following your example, parents. Yeah. And if you're not going to yeah, do it, not I'm not going to do it. Yeah, she's over it at this point. And the parents are just fully checked out. So it's, it's great. It's all great. Mm-hmm. So oh, great. I can't imagine. Yeah. Um, and it was so great that we got to see some amazing quotes on this Woo-hoo. book. Yes. Which I didn't even realize how delightful these were until Andrea so called these good. to my attention. You guys, you guys haven't even gotten to see them see them yet. Yes, it um, so yes, the version that we have I just yeah. has a description. Just it doesn't have any little abbreviated quotes. synopsis. Yeah. So as I mentioned in the first episode, which if you haven't watched, go back and watch. But um the the first thing that struck me on this book is like right away immediately, it's kids bop American psycho. Cannot say it enough. It's terrifying. And I was like, this must be my interpretation. This can't be what was supposed to happen. Mm -hmm. But then you read the blurbs on the back of the book. And like, this book focuses on the dormant, indiscriminate cruelty of the mob and the absolute evil of any leader who uses her powers to direct that cruelty against a victim. Will be read by many who love her books. (laughs) Ouch. <laughs> Where did that blurb come from? That is the review of like a horror novel. <laughs> it's terrifying. This book is terrifying. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> um, Judy Bloom, esteemed horror writer. Right? But then on the flip side, another one a good family story, as no. well as no. a school story. This has good characterization and dialogue. Untrue. A vigorous first-person writing style. Untrue. And ellipses? A respectful and perspective understanding of the anguish concern of preteen years. I am so shocked. Recommended. What? By the Bulletin of the Center for Children's Books. No. Yeah. They're, That's I, terrible. <laughs> these two reviews are like... <laughs> Night and day. 
<laughs> and she picked a mouth. Judy was like, those are good. It's like, yep. It's I just something those. for everyone. <laughs> yes, it's all fine. encompassing. Yes. <laughs> God. You want a horror novel? Read that one. You want to... <laughs> Yeah. Right, you want a wholesome family flick? Read that one. Right, um, and oddly, two of these are from the New York Times. One's from the New York Times book review, and the other's just straight from the New York Times. So the one Andrea read was from the New York Times book review, where it describes it as, yeah, kids. Lord of the America. Flies, oh, yeah. yeah, definitely Lord of the Flies. Yeah. and the New York Times just says an outstanding book of the year. Like, oh. why would you pull two blurbs from the same? So those are the only reviews for this. <laughs> the rest of the reviews They're are actually like, These from the same are reviews. Scary. Like, <laughs> through it and all. I think the only one that sort of fits is an accurate, entertaining, eh, warts and all picture of under 12 social dynamics. Uh, yeah, that's probably the yes. closest. Unfortunately, yeah. sad. Yep. Um, and an inside look at how obnoxious some well-to-do suburban fifth grade children can be to each other and adults. That one's my favorite. Wait, did I write that one? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the ALA book list. Yeah, that's that's pretty close. I think those are pretty spot on. Yeah. I just, I need to know, like, what did they write in the Scholastic Book Fair pamphlets for this book? Oh, you yes. know? Yes. Like, did they How have did they this at the Scholastic it? Book Fairs? And, I'm like, sure when you did. got the little booklets home and your parents were like, yeah, sure, here's a check. Like, what did they say about this book? Oh, did they, I wonder if they just had the little blurb that, like, we have. One. So, <sighs> the, like, little blurb on the back of the book is a person who can laugh at herself will be respected. Right, which Whoa. that's the um, that's advice that Jill's yeah. mom gives. Super her. hate it, but Linda doesn't laugh, and maybe that's the problem. There's something about her that makes Jill and a lot of kids in her fifth grade class want to see how far they can go, but hey. nobody, least of all Jill, expects the fun to end where it does. Fun, fun, the fun. <laughs> There's also, no where fun. it ends is where it begins. It's a snake eating its own tail. They yeah. just play someone else. <sighs> <laughs> Yeah, it's so much. <laughs> all right. Well, now that we're good Ouch. and riled up, <laughs> now that we're all angry, we will see you guys all next week, Wednesday, as we continue to discuss Judy Bloom's Blubber. <laughs> oh, yep. We're going to need a moment to calm down. Um, thank you very much <laughs> to our guests today, uh, Sarah, Bianca, and Andrea, uh, myself, uh, Laura Holterman. Thank you guys very much for joining us. And thank you very very much to sexy hackers for giving us the space to be outraged and smash stuff um be sure to go on and like us on all the social medias facebook instagrams all of those all um, the oh you can actually just like the sexy ah. hackers page and take it everything yeah yeah um and then subscribe and comment and review and do all, all the, the things. Yeah, do all the things all the things that make internet magic work we welcome your yes. feedback yay and we'll help see you the guys. algorithm yeah <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you guys next Wednesday. Bye -bye. SexyHackers.com Stream Team